Greetings, it's Tony from Old River Hard Goods again. This video is going to deal with some of the techniques I use for restoring old wooden molding planes. I've been restoring old planes now for over 30 years since I first started collecting them and even before I started selling them. And I've tweaked my techniques a little bit as time went on, but this is pretty much the way I've done it the whole time. Some folks might not agree with it, but this is what I do. So sit back and enjoy, and I hope you learned something. Thanks. As you can see, I got quite a few of them kicking around here. A lot of them just missing blades and parts and stuff like that, but some of them, once in a while I dig something out and see what I can make of it. Okay, these are the planes that I'm going to be working on today. They're a pair of side bead molding planes used to put a decorative bead on the edge of a board. This one here is a quarter inch side bead made by the H. Chapin Company of Pine Meadows, Connecticut. They were plain and tool makers who worked from 1828 and the successors continued it until 1901. This one is a 5 8 inch side bead made by Henry Wells. Uh, he worked in both Northampton and Williamsburg, Massachusetts. This one has the Northampton stamp along with the eagle mark, which is somewhat collectible. They both have some issues, but uh, I think they're going to come through the process okay, so let's get to work. Okay, so the first step in doing this, of course, is to pull the wedges. So I'll start with this one first. Now I'll give it a few tugs, and obviously it's not going to move by itself. So my technique for this is I pinch it, the wedge, between my thumb and forefinger on my left hand, position it so I can push down a little with the heel of my hand. I take the mallet and I tap. In this case, it came out pretty easily. I'll stick it a little at the end, but that's not too bad. Okay, this one. And they also came out pretty easily. I didn't pull these before, but you know, sometimes they come out, sometimes they come out pretty easily. Sometimes they come out hard, they come out pretty easily. These are the irons. Uh, they need a little bit of cleaning, but uh, nothing too bad on these guys. So we're in luck there. Both of these irons are fairly clean. So the only thing I'm going to do with them is take some 400 grit paper. Give them a light sanding there. And there. Oh, this one needs a little more. Right. Now, this tank's got a little mushrooming on the end, so I'm just going to take a file. Run it over that. See that? Yeah, flip it around and do it this way. Just to get the sharp edges off. All right. 
Now they're ready to polish up. All right, that was exciting, wasn't it? If you can hear, I was using a fine wire wheel, which I know some people lose their mind over, but I've been doing it for a while. And as you can see, they cleaned up really nice. This one's made by the Humphreyville's uh, company. They were a big plain iron manufacturer back in the day. This one isn't marked. This is the one from the Chapin. Got a little roughness on the tang, but a lot of times they never finish them off real pretty to start with. But these are the important areas, and they both came out good. Now, this is another one of those things that some folks don't agree with me on, but I've been doing this for quite a while, and this is what I use. Paint stripper. Dumble on the pan. Take some steel wool and start cleaning. This serves a couple purposes. Of course, the, you can see there we're starting to have some paint on here, so I'm going to have to carefully work that out. Hopefully, it's not latex or anything nasty like that. No, it's coming off. I don't want to scrub too hard on the mark to abrade it, but this also helps get rid of some of that accumulated, what I call hand snot. Which to some people is patina, to me it's just gunk. Most of the time I go with the grain of the wood, but once in a while you got to give it a up and down a little bit to work something out. A little bit on the sole here. And clean that up. And then back here to the heel. Wipe it off with paper towels. I recycle a lot of paper towels from the uh, bathroom, so there's always a plentiful supply. As you can imagine in this business, I spend a lot of time washing my hands before going rather than after. The other thing the uh, stripper does is in this day and age is helps get rid of any uh, nasties that the planes may have picked up from sitting around. This stuff will kill just about anything. All right, I'll need just a little more here. Paint showed up. That is paint is the curse of old tools, paint and rust. You always you don't find one, you find the other.
I clean up pretty good. Uh, the heel needs just a little more. In plain terminology, the back is the heel, the front is the toe. You may not mention that, you may not know that, now you do. Wipe that off. Now, take the wedge. Uh, this one's got a chip on the top, but that's just part of the character. I only do the exposed areas. I don't do anything that fits down inside the body, except here on the tip a little bit. I'll wipe it down. Right, that's number one. Number two. Now this one has some water stain in here, rust stain in. Maybe, well, I won't say it. Other staining happens when you use woodworking tools. And this stuff won't get rid of that. It's just part of the patina at this point. Again, I don't want to destroy the mark by scrubbing on it too hard. Both of these are single box side beads, meaning there's just a strip of boxwood set into the beach body. That acts, boxwood being harder, wears a little slower than does beach. I mean, they made unbox side beads, but usually you find them there. The bead section is pretty well worn down on them. Piece of paper towel here to kind of work this out. And then the wedge. Again, not hitting down into the area where it goes into the plane. Wedge also has some staining. But and And they're, now they're clean. All we got to do is put the finish on them and we're ready to call it a day. All right, if you've watched my video on uh, making the beeswax mix, then you're familiar with it. If you haven't, I suggest you go ahead and do it. Last step here is to apply some to the planes. Now, some people don't like this. I know, I've heard all the arguments before, but it's a historical mix, and it works well, and I've never had a problem with it. So, and I guess 30 years of experience kind of counts for something once in a while, but there's always an expert. And just kind of wipe it off.
Everybody says, well, doesn't it darken the wood? But as you can see, it's not really changing the patina of it. Matter of fact, the only time I ever had it dark in a plane was a, a very old Cooper's Sun plane. That's a plane that's shaped in a kind of half moon shape. It was made out of apple wood and it was very dry. And when I hit it with this stuff, it turned black. So it then spent a year sitting out in the front window of my old shop getting sun bleached until it looked nice enough to work with again. All right. The wedges, again, I'm just putting a little on the top. And there on the tip. Wiping it off. And do this wedge first since it's closer. Sorry about the sound effects outside. It's a problem with living in a town or being in a small town. Too much traffic for my taste, but until they put me in charge and let me do something about it, which ain't gonna happen, it ain't gonna happen. done one final step and then we're ready to put them back together since the wedge on this one was a little sticky well no it's not too bad let's check this one yeah that one's got just a little stick to it what i do in case of sticky wedges you can use a chisel you can use a scraper you can even use a pocket knife just carefully scrape it down a little bit. Not taking off hardly any wood. A lot of times they just get bowed a little bit. It still sticks a little bit. It's not going to get stuck, so I'm not going to worry about it. So, and then all we got to do, final wipe up. Irons back in the wedges. Note I'm just finger inserting the wedges because. I want to pull them when I take the pictures to sell these guys. So, and here we have the finished planes. They came out fairly good for the time invested. And here comes the train. A little wax left on them, but I'll take care of that later. But. These guys are pretty much ready to use. Well, that's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it educational and enjoyable and maybe even learned something out of it. So 
Until the next time, thanks for watching, and bye.